Welcome to Don's Key Tech. In this video, I am going to introduce to you about MongoDB Atlas Cloud Database. This is part 2 of my MongoDB IoT Developer Series where we will integrate a database to our Internet of Things projects. We will be using Arduino boards, Raspberry Pi computers, and MicroPython devices to connect to our database and control our electronic circuits. Are you excited? Then let's start exploring. We have discussed MongoDB in part 1 of this series, so I would not be discussing what MongoDB and its features are in this video. MongoDB Atlas is a cloud database fully managed and secured and can be deployed on different cloud providers such as Amazon, Azure, or Google. Prior to introduction of cloud technologies, companies manage, deploy, and fine-tune their own databases at their own premises. This introduces several complexities in terms of maintenance and performance. The concept of database as a service was coined to resolve these complexities. With MongoDB Atlas, you'll have MongoDB database running with just a few clicks and in just a few minutes. All we have to do is just sign up, create our own cluster, set up our database, and we now have a fully functional MongoDB database. So, let's go into a demo on how you can get started with MongoDB Atlas. First, Google for MongoDB Atlas and click the first link that will return that is found on the search result. Once you are in this link, just click the sign up button. In the sign up, you can use your Gmail account so that you, you would authenticate using your preferred email address. Next, once you are signed up, then you are going to be required to create your own cluster automatically. So in the create new cluster page, you will be asked what server or type of server you want to create. In our case in here, you can sign up for a shared, which is the pre tier of the MongoDB Atlas offerings, and then click the cloud provider where you want to create. In my case, just click the Azure. And since I'm in Asia, I just selected the Hong Kong. And then after that one, just click create the cluster. By the way, you can change the cluster name in here. I have created my cluster to be IoT-cluster. So right now, it says that the cluster name is already created. So I will not create it already. And it takes some time. So I just click cancel. So once the cluster is created, it will require you to perform several tasks. One is the database access, which is you need to create a user that will have access to your database. I created one, which is the IoT user, but you can add a new database user also by you clicking that button. And then at the same time, you need to click this network access wherein you can restrict the number of IP address that can access your cluster. So in my case in here, it, I automatically added my IP address during the creation of the cluster. But you can add your own IP address by adding it to the list. Next, once you are in the database deployment, then we can now begin creating our database. To do that, you can go into the Browse Collections. Once you are in the Collections tab, then we can create our database by clicking this Add My Own Data. So let's try this one. So in the Create Database, I'm just going to create a database called people underscore db. And the name of my collection is people. Just ignore these two options for now, but we will use this later. And then just click Create. Once the creation of the collection is done, then you now have a database called people underscore db and a collection called people, which we are going to use later to store person information. So as you can see, by using the cloud 
is our interface, then we are able to create the different objects that we want. However, I, there is a tool that you can use or you can install locally in your laptop so that we can communicate with our MongoDB cluster. And then that tool is called the MongoDB Compass. The search for MongoDB Compass and then click the first link that will come up. And then download the MongoDB Compass and then install it in your workstation or your laptop. Once it is installed, then we can now communicate with our cluster. And what we need is just the string connection. To get this string connection, what we can do is to go back to our cluster. So this is our cluster. And then click the overview tab. And in the overview tab, click the connect button. In the connect buttons, select this connect using MongoDB Compass. Then the option, the I have MongoDB Compass installed and then select 1.12 or later. You would see that there is a connection string in here and this is the name of our database. So just copy this one. And then after copying, paste it in here. As you can see, this is my username and the password that I, I have assigned. I have created IoT user and IoT user. And I wanted to connect to the people underscore DB database. Once the database is connection is already populated, then just click connect. Now we are connected to our cluster. So as you can see, there is the people DB and our people collection. And it has no data as of the moment. The next thing that we will do is to populate our MongoDB people collection with person info. So I have here a sample JSON file that we will going to use to create a sample data. As I have mentioned, whenever we are adding or getting information from our MongoDB database, we will be using this JSON format. So let's try copying this one and then we click the add data and then insert document once the insert document pop-ups then we can just remove this one and paste it there and then click the insert once the insert is successful then you would see that there is an a uh, document that is already added into our people collection since there is an object ID assigned. This object ID, by the way, is unique throughout the MongoDB database. So we can use this later to verify what particular document is used to insert the, the info that we have inserted. So right now, the people collection has one document. If, and if we go back to our user interface in the cloud, and you go to the collections tab also, and then go to the people, then you would see that the record is already added also and can be seen in our cluster. Next, we can add also multiple records into our database. So say for example, I wanted to populate the test collections with different data. So what we can do in here is you click the add data and import JSON or CSV file. In our case in here, I wanted to create a test data that will mimic or mirror the data in here. So for this case, what I'm using is uh, the website called Macaroo. Macaroo is the, it's a site wherein you can create your test data. So for example, you can create the field here, the first name, and the type is first name also. And at the same time, you can add more information. And then you can create how many rows you wanted to add. So in our case in here, I have just populated the first name, last name, and several other information. If you click the preview button, then you would see that it has already created this test JSON file for me. So let's go back to our test database. And as you can see, there is a phone numbers type in here, which is some sort of a JSON array. 
We can also mimic this type of behavior in Makaru by adding another field and then paste the field as phone numbers and then we set the type into JSON array. So right now we have a JSON array. So let's just limit it into three records per person. And then what we can do next is to create this value, the type and the number. To do that, just click another field and just add phone numbers that type. And what we want is to create the type as home, office, or business, or mobile. So to do that, just click the custom list. In the custom list, we can add home, mobile, business. And then the last field is the number. So we can add another field called number. And the type is a phone type. So let's type phone. And then as you can see, we can now have click the preview button. And we now have this JSON array wherein the type is mobile. So automatically, this website will create our test data for us. And we don't need to populate our own or create our own record set. How cool is that, right? So I have already created my own uh, test data. So what we're going to do is just import it in our database. So to do that, just click the add data, import JSON or CSV file. And this is the map data that I have created from the Macro website. Now I just click the, the type as JSON and then click import. And then click done. As you can see from my web page, from my MongoDB compass right now, I now have 51 records and you can navigate it here. Okay. The same records also is available in my cloud. So if we click the refresh button in here, then it will retrieve the list of collection or database. And as you can see, it's now able to retrieve the record set. Now, we now have our test data, then we can start querying our data set. So as I have mentioned in the relational database management system, we can query the number of records that we have by filtering it with some fields. In our case in here, in MongoDB, we need to pass in a JSON object. So say for example, let's go to, let's pick one, which is this one, the MacNeil. So what you need to do is to just create a JSON object. So a JSON object is a curly brace and a closing brace. And then we type last name. And then after typing the last name, then just click the MacNeil. And then after clicking that one, just click find. Then as you can see, there is only one record that contains the value last name, which is MacNeil. Next. Another thing that we can check is, is there is to find out how many documents contains an age that is greater than 50. So to do that, you can check the, this one and then click age. And then in the age section, what we want is to have some sort of an operator that will check the age column or fields. To do that, there is an operator called dollar $GT. So dollar $GT means the, uh, greater than, and then click, click the, and then we supply the values. So what we want is 50. So we are filtering our data with records that has age greater than 50, and then click find. So as you can see, there are 21 records that has the age greater than 50. So right now, these are the records that has age that is greater than 50. All of these commands are or query filter are available in the website of the MongoDB. But basically, that is how we can filter or query our data set. So if you want to return everything, then just pass in a blank JSON document and then click find. But you can see the record now comes with the 51 records. So Basically, that is all how you easy it is to create your own MongoDB Atlas. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So basically, that is how easy it is 
to create and set up your own MongoDB Atlas. So we have not, there is no need for us to set up our own MongoDB. And what we just need is to just sign up, create a cluster, and now we are have a running instance of a MongoDB Atlas database, which we are going to use later to control the electronic circuits that we have that is running in Arduino, Raspberry Pi, or in the MicroPython device. And that's it. So the write-up for this document is available also in the description of this video. And we'll continue with the next post or the next video in this series. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!